Hi guys, it's Miss Epstrom. So I thought that I would go over um, the project for this storytelling unit. So there is um, a lot of storytelling that happens in the Canterbury Tales, and so we do something similar. So I'm just going to go over the handout a little bit and then talk some more. So everyone tells stories every day. Some are amazing, touching, funny, memorable, while others are story basket stories. This realization has been going on since humans could talk. The ability to tell a good story is an art form, something to be appreciated. Some stories are so familiar, we don't even have to be, they don't even have to be written down. This is very true with family stories. You know, as soon as your grandmother opens her mouth, she's going to tell a story about how she met your grandfather or when your father put a rubber band around his head to pretend to be an Indian and he had to take, be taken to the hospital. True story. My dad did that. You wait for these certain turns and twists that are always there every time the story is told. We're going to examine this art form and the tradition that is essential to all cultures throughout the world and time. So we're going to be performing something called the moth. Now the moth is a real storytelling program. Um, they have a podcast, they have videos out, it's competitions all over the United States. Um, and so you can read a little bit about the background. Uh, basically, it started out um, as stories told on someone's porch and they would all hang out and have drinks and tell stories and then it grew and grew and grew and grew and then people started um, a foundation about it so you can go to the moth.org and see many different um stories and competitions and they often happen around the area in fact um, there was one that was going to be performed this summer in dayton but i don't know if it's going to be still performed and the there's always one in Louisville, so if you're ever in Louisville, you can pick up one of those. Um, so, the moth has several requirements. Um, first, it is that it has to have a story arc. So it has to be your traditional plot diagram, though different parts might be shorter or longer than others. Um, it's 10 minutes, and it has to be a true story. Now, yeah, I'm not necessarily going to know if it's true, but um, there's a lot of stuff that we will do beforehand to make sure that you create a story that is genuine and makes sense and shows us something about you. Um, it's going to be based on a theme. You're going to be randomly assigned a theme. Um, normally we would have a bucket that we throw a bunch of ideas into and then you draw out two and pick between those two. Because of the situation that we're in, I'm going to figure out a different way to do that. I'm not totally sure what but you'll be assigned a theme. Now your story will have to connect to that theme in some sort of way. There are a lot of ways to connect any kind of theme. Like if you're, if you have a story that you know you want to tell, like let's say I really wanted to tell the story of Dean's birth and I chose a theme that was um, love thy enemy. Um, I could twist it around and make it that the enemy is the pain of childbirth and it would still connect. Okay. So don't feel limited in your theme structure. So, um, then at the end, you will be writing about how you structured your story, how your performance went and those sorts of things. We are going to be performing them. You're going to record them. Um, we'll talk more about that at a later date. That's really something I'm still working out. So not totally sure. We will be watching and listening to several moths beforehand, student moths and professional moths, as well as I will be telling you a moth. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Um, the goal is to learn how to tell a good story though. So there are a couple of things that you're going to be graded on as far as your actual moth story. Um, you have to establish the setting, uh, establish characters, there has to be a conflict. There has to be a problem that drives a story along. Um, I will show you some stories, some moth stories that clearly do not have a conflict and therefore were really, really dull. Um, it has to have all of the events. And then if you'll notice, the concluding statement is worth 10 points, a much bigger chunk of the plot structure. The last sentence that you say in your story is going to be hugely significant. And we're going to be looking at several stories and what their last lines are and how that is important or not, how they chose a good one or not, and the importance of that.
Um, you can't tell it with notes. It has to be without notes. I'm going to see where your eyes are when you're recording your performance. So it should be easy to tell if you're reading or if you're not. Um, you need to grab our attention. It needs to be interesting. Um, and so those are all other qualities. Uh, it does need to be 10 minutes and you get a point taken off um, for every minute that's either under or over. I'm giving you a one minute grace period. So it's really from nine to 11 minutes. After that, then I start taking off points. And if you'll notice, there's a writing reflection at the end. We'll talk more about that when we get there. Um, but basically you're going to analyze how you did and why you did what you did. Um, so that is going to be your moth. I really recommend that you go and check out the website, the moth website. I know that this is something that a lot of kids kind of dread, but it is my favorite thing every year. Every year we run the gamut of emotion from crying, sobbing, to laughing so hard we can't breathe, um, and everything in between. And it really lets us know something about our fellow human beings. And so remember your seniors, and obviously you're never going to probably see these people again. Um, so don't be afraid to tell that story that nobody seems to know, but they should know about you. Um, so keep that in mind and we'll talk more later on. Miss you guys. Bye.